Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to move over from my 2023 Hobonichi weeks that I've been using for meal planning over onto my 2024 Hiroku Kubota Another Night of Falling Star Sparklers Hobonichi weeks. And I'm going to share some thoughts I have on why I think keeping a separate notebook for my meal planning has been a really useful strategy for helping me manage my ADHD symptoms. Before I begin, I wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for being here with me today. Whether you're new here or you've recently subscribed, I appreciate you so much. I absolutely love getting to know you in the comment section and the fact that I'm starting to see some familiar faces in my comment section brings me so much joy. So thank you so much again. And since I do tend to get chatty, I'm trying really hard to work on being a little more concise, but it is a work in progress. I invite you to settle in with a tea, coffee, or your favorite beverage and do what you need to do to get cozy. I'm currently drinking a coffee with a little bit of milk and a touch of maple syrup. And since it's winter here in Canada, it's getting a little bit cold, so I'm keeping warm under a nice thick blanket. I'm filming this at the end of 2023, but by the time I post this, it is going to be 2024. So because I had to do grocery shopping yesterday, I have already started using this book. But I think where we can get started today is first I'll do a flip through of how I use my book in 2023 and I'll point out a few things that I'd like to do differently when I start using this book. Okay, so taking a quick look at this 2023 Hobonichi Weeks, the first thing that I am going to do for 2024 is I am going to use this calendar to track the days that I wash our coffee filters. This was something that I was previously doing in my Hobonichi cousin, but I think it makes the most sense to be tracking in a book that is going to be living in my kitchen. And so I will just use the 2024 version of this calendar and just note um, on this calendar when the coffee filters have been washed, just so that I can keep track of when I need to do it next. So I never really got into a good groove of using the monthly calendars. I started out by planning out my meals three months in advance at the beginning of the year. And so this view was more helpful when I was trying to see from a monthly glance how often we were having beef or how often we were having chicken. And then I was trying to get to a place where we would only buy proteins once a month and then store it in our freezer. That just turned out to be too inflexible for our lifestyle because by the time we would get to later on in my meal plan, plans would change, things would come up. And so I switched over to only planning two weeks in advance. And because of that, I haven't really been using this section as much and so something that I started doing was I started using dots to note down dates that we went grocery shopping and I explored writing down at the bottom how much we spent. Then I started noting down the name of the grocery store, how much we spent and I started playing around with using different colored dots for different types of events. So I think moving into 2024, I want to use this monthly overview as a place to continue noting down when we go grocery shopping. So I have these dot stickers that I purchased sometime last year and I have a pretty big roll of them. So I'm always looking for ways to use these up. I'm certainly not the first person who has thought of using dots to help organize my planner. And one name that I have seen people consistently referencing and crediting is Megan Rhiannon. So Megan, thank you so much for this idea. 
I think moving into 2024, I'm going to be a little more intentional with how I use these. I'm thinking about using the fact that I have different color dots to my advantage and taking one color to represent planned grocery trips and another color for spontaneous or unplanned. We're obviously not perfect. We try our best to do all of our shopping in one go, but sometimes grocery store that we go to doesn't have some of the ingredients that we need or sometimes we run out of staple items that I can only get from a certain type of grocer and so I think it would be interesting to see how often we're making these spontaneous trips. So that's one idea that I have. Another thing that I want to use this book for is I want to lean into the um, idea of using this for like all things meal related and so I'm also going to start tracking restaurants that we go to or nights that we're ordering takeout. I think it's interesting to remember some of the places that we like to frequent and, and going into 2024 we are going to try to do a few more out of home dates and so I think it'll be really nice to include that information so we can get a full picture of how much we're spending on food overall. So right now I'm starting to build a pretty good picture of how much we're spending on groceries but we aren't really capturing how much we're spending when we go out and I think that for a full comprehensive picture of overall food spend for the year I would really like to include that information. And I also want to start writing about our experiences when I go to restaurants with my friends or family and I'd like to record things that we ate, how we rated it, how much we spent, that kind of stuff. So I think that's going to live in this book. But if I find that I'm running out of room in the notes pages, then maybe it's something that I will be documenting in my fun journal. We will see where it makes the most sense, but at the very least, I would like to have the amount spent tracked in here and where we went so that I can get a fuller picture of how much I'm spending overall in terms of eating at home versus away from home. In terms of my weeklies. I started out for a while tracking what I was eating for lunch and dinner on the weekly page. I liked it because I liked having more awareness around what I was doing for lunchtime because I've kind of figured out dinner pretty well after having done it for a year, but I do find lunchtime tends to be, I would call it minor stress because I'm only really making lunch for myself, but I'm always kind of scrambling to find things to make for lunch because I've made a concerted effort to not eat leftovers from dinner for lunch the next day. I started tracking what we were actually eating on this side and I did that for a while, but I didn't really feel inspired to keep up with it. I mainly use this page to note down events happening close to dinner time that might impact whether I can cook or whether I'll even be home for dinner. And then I would use this page mostly for planning. So any ideas that I have for the upcoming week. So I might start filling this out in advance so that by the time I get to this week, I have some ideas ready to go. And then I will do my actual planning in the bottom here and then groceries here. Th this is pretty much exactly what I've been doing for um, the rest of the year. Sometimes I'll put down when we go grocery shopping and how much, but I am duplicating information at this point, so I don't think it's necessary to be writing it down in the weekly view as well as the monthly. I think it should just live in one place. It's worked out really well, and since I planned two weeks in advance, I was getting to a point where I'd have a shopping list here for the dinner plans on this page and a shopping list here for the dinner plans on this page. So then I'm at the grocery store and I'm kind of flipping between these two pages, which I think could be improved. And so heading into next year, since I'm doing it two weeks in advance, I'm thinking uh, on the notes page of the first week that I'm planning, I will continue to have a section for the dinner plans for that week. And that'll be the same for both pages. But um, on this page, I'm going to write down ideas that we have. 
that we want to think about cooking and what food we are heading into these two weeks with. That would include any leftover veg that we're going to want to incorporate into the next week. And then this page is going to be the main shopping list. So a, a small tweak, but instead of having ideas on two weeks at a time, I'm just going to have it on one. And then I've been experimenting with that in 2024 already. And I will show you what I mean when I get into this book. And then in terms of the notes pages, I'm really enjoying noting down what we buy for groceries. It's been really helpful for me to get a feel for how much things are costing between different grocery stores. So I'll continue recording what we buy. It's working for me and um, I enjoy being able to see trends in what we're buying and how much we're spending and how much food is costing. I'm also going to include for next year information on how much we're spending when we go out to eat or when we order takeout. And occasionally I put in some recipes that I refer often to. So I'm going to keep doing that because just a better experience than pulling out my phone and trying to scroll through my notes. So I will do that as well. And I'm also going to be keeping some like wish lists or like common things that we like to get from certain grocery stores. So there are some places we only go to like once a month or so, Costco being an example. And so so there are certain things that we like to get in bulk from them. So I find it helpful to have a running list of things that we know when we go there, we like to stock up on. So yeah, I'm going to have a couple lists like this that I can refer to easily. And when it comes to the My 100 list, thinking about breaking these up um, by season. So if there are certain meals we like to eat in colder months like stews and soups versus meals we like to eat in the summer like anything on the barbecue. The intention here is that I'll break up this list a little bit so that I can have a little more variety and seasonality but still have hopefully like a relatively um, compact list of foods that we can choose from so that I'm not overwhelming myself uh, when it comes to meal planning in general. I still have no idea what to do with this 365 days checkoff sheet. If you have ideas, please share. I would love to hear them. So now I'm going to move over some of my ideas into my 2024 book so that I don't forget my plans. And while I do that, I want to spend some time talking about why I think this approach has been so successful for helping me manage some of my ADHD symptoms, at least when it comes to this very daunting task, which actually doesn't feel daunting anymore. I have been trying to get into the habit of meal planning for my whole adult life, I guess. And I know this might not seem like a big win for some people, but Having recently been formally diagnosed with ADHD, a lot of things make sense to me now as to why certain things are harder for me to do. And when I find myself struggling with a task that seems so simple like this, um, it has impact on my overall well-being because I'm feeling disappointed and really frustrated. And so the fact that I have been able to get to a place where I find meal planning has become like a routine that I don't really think too hard on is actually a good thing. And so I think it's great that I'm not really feeling the need to make like radical changes from how I was approaching it last year into this year. That's not to say that it won't evolve from the beginning of 2024 to the end of 2024, but for now I'm feeling really at peace with how the system is working and I wanted to spend a bit more time reflecting on that and sharing my thoughts with you. And as a quick disclaimer, I do have to say I'm I'm not an ADHD expert by any means and everything I share today is based on what I have come across in my research or my own opinions and experiences. So for anything that's not my own idea, I'll be sure to include some references below in the description if you'd like to read into these things more on your own. 
And if you suspect you have ADHD and you're struggling to function in your social or academic or your work life or all of those things, please consider seeking a professional assessment because you don't have to suffer alone. And this is coming from someone who tried to tough it out and got to a point where I just needed to build more self-awareness and be kinder to myself and find ways to work with my situation as opposed to fighting it. So for starters, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. My working understanding of it is that it is when an individual with ADHD is characterized by inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity usually to the point where it affects their ability to function in social, academic, or work settings. I'm going to focus on the inattention side of ADHD because that's where I struggle the most. And examples of inattentive symptoms include things like having difficulty organizing tasks and activities, hence all this extra effort trying to make these planners work for me, having trouble following through with things like chores, often loses things necessary for tasks and activities, is often forgetful in daily activities like doing chores or running errands, all of those things on their own, left unchecked, I can kind of fall apart a little bit and struggle to function. And so I'm keeping this video focused on meal planning, but these symptoms are present in multiple areas of my life. And I can say it takes a lot of mental energy for me to overcome them. And most of the energy that I have dedicated up until this point has been put towards overcoming them in my academic and professional career. And so I think the reason why it took me so long to realize that I was struggling is because I had built up so many systems, kind of like what you're seeing here in my school and my work life, because there was some part of me that recognized that I needed to put in extra work in order to stay on top of things. And I needed to adapt my situation to figure out how I learn best because I didn't know that I had ADHD until very recently. So I went through school and all of my past jobs without any accommodations, which I think could have really made my life a lot easier and could have prevented the multiple times that I had burnout throughout my life, maybe. So that's why I think it is so important to have awareness and also to take the time to figure out how to make accommodations for yourself. When it comes to my home physical environment, unfortunately, it has always been my lowest priority. And as a student, I was that person who was eating like craft dinner and skipping meals and just generally not taking care of myself. And I think that some of these things, and I didn't develop the skills or routine as a child to know how to deal with these things as an adult. And to be frank, I wasn't always motivated to do so until I reached a point where it no longer felt optional. So why do I think my approach of keeping a separate notebook for meal planning has helped me overcome this seemingly large hurdle? On a side note, I have no immediate plans for how I want to use this yearly overview. Um, so if you have any ideas, let me know. I guess I could maybe think about putting in how much I'm spending each day, or maybe I could track how many days we're eating at home versus eating out. I don't know yet, but if you have any ideas that is within the realm of meal planning and just general meals and groceries, let me know. So for here, I think for this page, I said expenses like grocery restaurants take out. So I think that's the plan for this one. So I'll just leave this here to remind me of what I was thinking. 
Okay, so I will show you what I've done so far. So I already did my meal planning first two weeks of January. And so what I was saying before was I'll start off with ideas. I think I'll leave a little more room for this for the following weeks, but I'll have some ideas. I made a few plans like we'll do a beef stew one night. I knew we were going to have some chicken soup leftovers from the end of December. We took a quick look at what we had in our fridge and freezer. So I just planned out like tofu coconut sauce and beef stew and then, you know, the usual leftovers and the pie because I think we're going to be tired this week. So just wanted to ease into the new year with some cooking and some low effort meals. I then added my shopping list on this side. So unlike 2023, where I would have a shopping list here and a shopping list here, I have switched it so that I only have the one list. And it's a small change, but it made a big difference when we were actually at the grocery store and I was only referencing one page. So it reduced the chances that I would forget to pick something up. So I'm going to move the dinner plan a bit over to the bottom. Um, so again, really small tweaks, but I had this unused space that I don't really need. So I'm going to move that down and I'm still figuring out my schedule for the next two weeks. So these are blank because I am starting a new role this week. So I, I don't have full clarity on what my schedule will be like. But when I do, I will add anything in here that might impact the dinner plans. And of course, if we need to, we will tweak. And I'm possibly gonna do a little bit of light lunch planning in here for myself, just so that I can make sure that I am taking care of myself during lunch. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see, but that's kind of what I'm thinking here. I will save all of my receipts in my book so that I can copy them down into my note system and then I'll discard the receipts after. So it's, it's a lot less bulky, I find, writing them out in the notes pages as opposed to saving all the receipts and having more clutter. Okay, so in terms of these, these dots now, I'm going to add in my plan for next year. So my thoughts are that I'm just gonna go ahead and make use of all these different I guess my one issue with these dots is some of these are so close in color that I feel like it's going to be challenging to see the differences in them, but I'm not going to go out and buy a new set of dots. So we are going to live with that. This is going to bother me a little bit because I want to be able to fit all of the dots. Okay, not perfect, but good enough. For this color dot, I'm gonna do planned grocery shop. For this color, I'm gonna do unplanned grocery shop. Um, this color, I'm going to do as recipes. This one, I'm gonna do as special occasions. So I don't mind that these two are almost the same color because I'm. it's the recipes, the special occasions, and the the takeout slash eating out, but I think I'm more interested in having stand out from groceries. So I'm going to call this um, special occasions. Yeah. So things like travel, birthdays, and this will be like restaurants, dine in or take out. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do for now. And of course this might evolve over the year but that's okay I don't mind when things change so this is the plan for now and we will try that out and see how it goes and I am excited to use these dots with a little more intention than I was doing before okay so now I'm just gonna fill in my shopping list so I can discard this receipt and while I do that I'm going to talk about why I think my approach of keeping a separate notebook for meal planning has really helped me overcome some of these uh, struggles that I've been experiencing with my ADHD. So there are several strategies that adults with ADHD have used to help compensate for their issues and improve their overall functioning. A few examples that I've come across are adapting one's behavior or environment to set themselves up for success. So in my case, that looks like having a planner that I'm keeping in the kitchen 
which is the environment that I'm already thinking about cooking. I'm already doing the cooking. I'm storing all of my recipes and I'm sort of in that mindset of, of thinking about meals. So keeping it there instead of say on my desk in a completely separate space in my home just sets myself up to be kind of in the mood to be doing this. Another example strategy is one that is focused on improving focus and concentration and paying essentially paying more attention, which is a really common ADHD symptom. So for me, keeping a book like this in the kitchen for planning ensures that when I'm opening it up, I'm only thinking about meal planning when I'm using it. I'm not suddenly thinking about whether I went for a run yesterday and how far or how much sleep I got in the past week. I'm only looking at what did we eat last week? What are some things we want to eat in the coming weeks? What do we already have in our fridge and our freezer? What are some of our favorite recipes? And what do we need to buy at the grocery store the next time we go to ensure that we have everything we need to make meals for the next few weeks? I really like the fact that this book is small enough that I can take it with me to the grocery store. So instead of, you know, jotting down what we need on a piece of paper or put it on my phone where I get distracted extremely easily when I pull out my phone, like I will pull out my phone intending to open up my grocery list and despite having turned off as many notifications as possible, I will find a way to get distracted and end up on some other app and completely forgetting about groceries. So having it in this book ensures that I stay on task until it is done. And the last thing that I want to say about this book is that it's not necessary to buy a fancy Hobonichi notebook or any notebook for that matter to do meal planning. I think This can be accomplished with a plain notebook, pad of paper. You can create calendars for free in a lot of Word document programs. So you definitely don't have to be super fancy. This is just a choice that I made to make this whole task of meal planning more enjoyable for me. I happen to really enjoy using a structured notebook that has the months and the weeks already baked in. So I don't have to take the time to like draw them out And I like being able to look back on what I've done and have that historical knowledge as a way to encourage me to keep going and get that sense of accomplishment when I see all those other weeks that I've been able to demonstrate that I can do meal planning, (laughs) if that makes sense. So yes, this isn't to say like you have to go out and get a Hobonichi Weeks and that's the only way that you can make this happen. But for me, I, I made a conscious choice to invest in a book like this and judging by how well things went last year in a Hobonichi Weeks, I feel very confident and hopeful that I can continue to do this in 2024. Another strategy is organization, which refers to implementing systems or methods to complete the task at hand. So for me, I've talked about this before, but this involves having a ready to go deck of recipe cards that I know I can make very easily that don't require complicated ingredients and are really flexible that I can adapt depending on what we have. So I've mentioned before that I have these meal cards from a meal kit service that we were using in 2022 in order to get us into the habit of cooking at home as opposed to ordering out. So I was taking the money that we would have been spending on ordering takeout and I was trying to refocus that spend on getting into the habit of cooking at home again. And so I kept all those recipe cards. I saved the ones that we like the most. And when I sit down to do a meal planning, since I know that I get decision fatigue really easily when it comes to deciding on what to make, I created a system for me to circumvent that by having these cards ready to go so I can quickly flip through them and not feel this like pressure to come up with this like perfect meal plan or spend too much time trying to think of what to make. I've done everything that I can to take that decision fatigue away and just keep me focused on tasks so that I don't get discouraged and then give up because it feels overwhelming. 
So it really helps me during the ideation process to coming up with meals, which I struggle with and I enjoy the routine of sitting down and opening my book. I enjoy writing on this paper. I enjoy flipping through my completed pages and kind of feeling like I mentioned before this sense of accomplishment, creating my grocery list and intentionally planning things out so that we don't end up cooking seven nights a week because that is another way to burn out and so planning in advance and having enough leftovers to warrant having like a full meal on another night will ultimately give us our time back on those other nights that we can use to put towards other hobbies or other tasks that need to be done around the home. I also plan intentional breaks so in my week I will intentionally have one to two flex days where I'll say we can pull something out of the freezer if we want, we can eat whatever leftovers we have left over if there are any, or we can order takeout or go on a dinner date. So I do like to keep things somewhat flexible in that way. And if I find that I need a, a more substantial break, I might even plan like, you know, neither of us are cooking at all and just taking the entire week off. I used to plan those in intentionally every month so I would do like three weeks of cooking and one week of leftovers and takeout. As you can imagine that started to get kind of expensive so I try to limit it to when I'm starting to feel like I really need it. So another strategy is external support like an example would be accountability partners. So my partner and I typically go grocery shopping together which makes the task of doing grocery shopping feel a lot more enjoyable and it really ensures that we get it done on a regular basis. The final strategy that I read about is one that I am familiar with and trying to not lean on too much is avoidance of the task entirely. So it is technically a compensatory strategy but it's obviously not a great one because it doesn't encourage me to actively work on solving the problem. I would say this is something that I would do before I started getting more serious and more focused on meal planning and creating a system for us to use. So it is a strategy that people use, but it's not really an ideal one for me. So those are the main strategies that came up for me. And going back to why I think this has been so helpful for me is because it is addressing things like adapting my behavior or environment to set myself up for success by keeping a book dedicated to this task in the kitchen, which is the environment that I'm going to be thinking about it. Keeping everything in one book increases my ability to focus on the task at hand. This whole process probably takes me 15 minutes or so. It takes up like so little time relative to before when I wasn't staying focused. And finally, even though Mike isn't really a paper planning kind of person, he's really embraced the fact that I've taken this on and he's really supported me with the planning. So sometimes at the beginning of the week, I will hand him the recipe cards and I'll say, hey, help me pick out some recipes. So we'll do that activity together. And as I mentioned, um, we will go grocery shopping together or sometimes on his way home from work, he'll pick some things up that we might've forgotten. So it, it really feels like a team effort and I'm not avoiding it anymore. So I'm, I'm really not leaning on that strategy of not making a plan and just going grocery shopping on Saturday and coming home with a giant bill because we didn't have a plan going in and then having to scramble to use up all the food we bought because we don't want it to go bad. So it's just been a win overall. I guess to wrap up my thoughts on this topic, so if I were to task myself with trying to set up a routine or work through a task that I really don't enjoy in the future, knowing what I know about some of these compensatory strategies that can really improve and combat those inattentive tendencies that might drive me to fail at following through with doing this task. I think some of the questions that I would ask myself are related to those strategies and I would use those questions to help me build some awareness and then some strategies on how I can overcome that and 
set myself up for success. And so some of the questions that I would ask myself in the future are, how can I adapt my task to make it more manageable? How can I adapt my behavior? Or how can I adapt my environment to really set myself up for success? Another question could be, how can I keep myself focused on the task when I'm actually doing it? If we're talking about um, building a workout routine, what can I do to ensure that I'm actually going to work out when I say I am? How can I minimize distractions to keep me focused on doing more of that task? Another question could be, how can I organize my environment or schedule or even make use of external organization methods to help me complete the task? So that could be like, making a to-do list. For me, in this case, it was making a, a shopping list when I go to the grocery store, using alarms to remind me of when I need to start a new task. And then when it comes to external support, um, who else can I leverage in my personal network to help me complete my task? And this could be family members, partners, friends, even professionals, so like coaches or therapists. And for me, in this example, it's um, having my accountability partner to help with the cooking and help with the grocery shopping and help with picking up the meals. And so we really try to do this together. And when I was training for a marathon in the past, I joined a running group. So I had a group of people to meet every week when it came to doing my long runs and my speed workouts and things like that. So building in that external support or those accountability partners. And then the final one might be something like, when am I not doing this task or, or how am I avoiding this task? And Or you could look at it as like, what are some blockers that are leading to me avoiding the task altogether? As an example, like I felt overwhelmed with the amount of possibility of different meals that we could cook every week. And as exciting as it is to try new meals every week, I didn't really want to invest that kind of time into cooking and meal planning because I just had so many other things going on. And so I would avoid it altogether and not make any decisions until I was actually at the grocery store and in what ways was I avoiding doing the task and using that to guide how I can overcome them. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here today. I hope you enjoy this casual setup for my 2024 Hobonichi weeks, which I will be using for meal planning and my thoughts on how using a separate notebook like this has been really good for managing my ADHD symptoms when they interfere with my ability to do meal planning in the first place. I would love to know what your experience has been like if you are someone who has struggled with ADHD symptoms or just ADHD-like tendencies and what has helped you stay on track when you are trying to tackle a task that feels really overwhelming and has been a challenge. And if you have any questions, let me know. I try to respond to every comment that I see on my channel. Otherwise, I hope your year has been off to a good start and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye.